Psalms chapter 1, going to verse 3 now. Okay. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water. There's another song that I like. And I'm going to try singing it again, so bear with me, please, brothers and sisters of Christ. I don't have the best verse in the uh, voice in the world, but um, let's see if I can remember. I shall not, shall not be moved. I shall not, shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Glory be to God, and I'll not be moved. Glory be to God, and I'll not be moved just like a tree. Planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. Now Jesus is my Savior, and I'll not be moved. Jesus is my Savior, and I'll not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the waters, I shall not be moved the post and trip people on my way to glory land and I'll not be moved on my way to glory land and I'll not be moved just like a tree planted by the waters I shall not be moved you know we're not capable of giving God glory without this book to God be the glory let's see Glory be to God, I will not be moved. This King James Bible, God's perfect written word, glorifies Him. It teaches you how to glorify Him. Are you standing? Are you immovable? I'm not going to those Bible perversions. Nobody's going to talk me out of it. This is the word of God. This is my stand. It teaches me how to live. It teaches me how I'm supposed to love my brothers and sisters in Christ. It teaches me how to love the lost world by preaching the gospel to them. It gives me precious promises. Now Jesus is my Savior and I will not be moved. The true Jesus of Scripture, the Godhead, I'm not going to be talked into the Trinity. There's nothing you can do. I will not be moved. You're not going to talk to me into the false God of post and mid-trib. Won't happen. Jesus is my Savior and I will not be moved. You will not talk to me out of the false into those false gospels. You will not talk me out of the true gospel of repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and confessing both in prayer. You won't talk me out of it. I will not be moved. You won't steal my crown of reward when it comes to looking to the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. I'm on my way to glory land, and I will not be moved. Is that your stand, brothers and sisters in Christ? You know how you keep that stand strong? By staying in the Word, meditating on night and day, keeping it in your heart. Okay. Uh, we're going to go through a big two-section verses. Matthew 13, 1. This is the parable of the sower. Matthew 13, 1, and we're going to go to Mark 14, 4, 14, when he explains what he's taught about. Here's the parable, and then he explains it. I decided to go through two different books. So we can get around the Bible a little bit more. Matthew 13, 1. Let's start there. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith... They sprung up because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Notice what it says there. Uh, some are a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. You're going to have Christians that barely have any fruit, and you're going to have Christians that have a lot of fruit. 
They have such a love for the Lord and His Word, and they want to live for Him, and they want to do the work for Him. I'm not talking about you have to be in full-time ministry. I'm saying, when we get to it, jumping ahead a little bit, but do you have a zeal to go out there and hand out gospel tracts, or lay gospel tracts everywhere, and the Lord will give you courage to start handing out gospel tracts? Do you stay in this Word every day? Do you talk with the Lord every day? The Lord says, get this out of your life. Are you getting it out of your life? Do you have a zeal for the Lord? There's some people that don't, won't have a lot of fruit. They're still, gonna, they're still saved and they're going to go to heaven, but they won't have a lot of fruit. And then you're going to have people that have a lot of fruit. Okay. Mark 4.14 Let's see what Jesus says about explaining what that parable means. The sower soweth the word. Okay, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus has given us his perfect written word. So as a Christian, he's sowing the word in us. For us, we're preaching the gospel to the world. Preaching truth, Jesus Christ. But like I said, this is directed at us as encouragement, brother and sister Christ. He's given us his word to sow in our hearts, to put in our hearts. Now, is there fruit? And these are they which are by the wayside, which the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay. Notice it says there, Satan cometh immediately. Remember we talked about... Uh, Satan is transformed in the, uh, into the angel of light, and no marvel, for his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. What does it say here? Satan com cometh immediately and taketh away the word of God. Would we read, walketh in the counsel of the ungodly? Someone tries to preach the two gospel. Today it's so hard, brothers and sisters in Christ. There's so many false teachers out there promoting false gospels and getting false converts to go out there and promote those false gospels. But the true gospel comes to somebody and Satan comes away and snatches it and replaces it with a false gospel. Okay? That's why you're not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. They'll get you messed up. And if you're not saved and you're watching this, true Bible, this, um, this channel that you're watching, uh, if you're not subscribed, it'll show up, but uh, this message was it? This message will save your life. I changed the name. Um, the reason I changed the name to the gospel message on this channel is some other videos are starting to catch up, and I like to keep that one ahead of all the other videos as far as views. I understand people can look at it for a few seconds, and then they can turn it off. But the true gospel you'll find at True Bible Believing God Fearing Ministries. King James Video Ministries teach the true gospel. JT teaches at... Uh, Sinners to Repentance, his ministry, uh, God's ministry through him, he teaches the true gospel. I teach the true gospel. Brian Harlow, um, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord to save you. You come to God broken. Okay, But brothers and sisters in Christ, for us who are saved, see how that lines up. You know, Satan comes in and walk uh, in the counsel of the ungodly. Satan's ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. You're going to have nothing to do with them. They'll mess you up. Okay? They can even go as far as to get you to turn your back on the Word of God. God will bring you back. He'll chasten you. But they can ruin your chances of having fruit. All right? Verse 16, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the Word, immediately receive it with gladness, and had no root in themselves, and so endured for, for, but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Notice what it says, seedeth in the seat of the scornful. Uh, have you heard those stories about, um, I was once a Christian, but now I'm an atheist? Yeah. Okay. They didn't stay in the Word, and they didn't sow the Word in their heart. They weren't truly saved to begin with. Okay, Satan snatches it away. Some people hear the true gospel, but when they realize, you mean I can't have the world? You mean the persecution comes along, and I'm losing my friends, and I'm upsetting family members, I lost my job? Which brings us into the next one. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the Word... 
and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, of riches and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word and it become unfruitful. Standing in the way of sinners that we read in Psalms 1.1. Uh, 1, 1. Okay? I've come across people, and I've said this before, I've come across a woman that I tried preaching the gospel to her and she says, I don't want to get saved. And I look, I was typing, it was Facebook I think it was, I said, why don't you want to get saved? And she came back and responded saying, because I want to live life my way. She understood that getting saved means that God takes over and she has to live God's way, the changed life. Okay? The cares of this world, is, um, the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and become unfruitful. Okay. And we're warned to not fellowship with those people. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. Remember it says, the light and the law of the Lord, which we read in Psalms chapter 1. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Are you receiving the word every morning and every night? Are you staying in Bible studies? Lately, since God's called me into ministry, um, I used to love watching Brother Brian's videos, going back to his old ones, uh, King James Video Ministries on YouTube. And I'd follow along in the Bible, and I keep telling myself, I want to do that, I want to do that again. i got another Bible coming, we're going to do a video on good pencils and setting up a good um, table of, of context in the Bible with colors, different subjects. And I'm going to start trying to because winter's coming in, and I'm going to be stuck in the house a lot because of the rain. But ultimately, I've been realizing that my favorite time when it comes to Bible studies, is when God's letting me do studies of my own just between Him and me. Just going through the Bible, doing word studies, doing expository studies, doing subject studies. And I'm just, I really get into it and say, Lord, you're amazing. Thank you for showing me that. That's where I'm having most of my joy recently. Okay? Receive the word, uh, hear the word, and receive it. Remember we talked about also, the word is meant to be spoken, heard, and read. No, you don't have to do all three of these, because people will come in and say, well, what if you can't hear, or what if you can't see, or what if you can't speak? The reason it's meant to be done with all three is so that you can do at least one of them. No matter what your physical ailment is, you can do at least one of them. God will make it possible. Okay? And yeah, someone can go with extreme, like people like to. Okay? Now, let's go to the next uh, part of that verse that we read. Uh, where it says, planted by the rivers of water, that's, and he shall be like a tree planted, okay? You get saved, that seed has been planted, and it starts to grow, and it starts to produce fruit. But what about the rivers of water, okay? John 4, 5, if you want to turn to John chapter 4, verse 5. A lot of people know this story. It's a good story once you start learning stuff in the Bible, and you go, I've read this story a lot uh, when I first got saved, didn't think much of it, because I started reading through the Bible as much as I could. But then over time, God shows you things. Okay. That's also, we're going to get ahead of myself, where the, it's going to say about how um, bring forth fruit in His season. God's going to show you things as time goes along. Sanctification goes your whole life. John 4, 5. Then cometh He to a city of Samaria, which is called Shishkar, or Sikar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of the Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which is a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given the living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? 
Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. She wasn't getting it. There are a lot of people that don't get it. But the water there, Jesus is the water. We get saved, he gives us his word. That's how we're able to grow and bear fruit. Okay? Remember, we keep saying this, I keep saying this. Um, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want your tree to grow and have life? You need the truth. You need Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is in you, and he opens this book. And this book allows you, waters you, as we're going to get to, and allows you to grow fruit. Everything ties in together, brothers and sisters in Christ. Everything does, okay, when it comes to Jesus Christ and his word. Okay? Not everything, but a lot of things tie together. 1 Corinthians 3, 6. I have planted Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. Again, about watering with the word. Okay? Uh, when it comes to preaching the gospel, we plant seeds. Someone else comes along and waters. Okay? And God gives the increase. God's the one that does the saving, not us. But also, you can say this, too. God, we preach the gospel and it plants the seed, and we get saved. That seed starts sprouting. We got saved. We're, uh, God saves us. Now, who does some of the watering? Uh, King James Video Ministries. God used him through his word to water me and help me grow. I'm learning things from JT, Brother JT at Sinners to Repentance. I'm learning things from brothers and sisters in Christ that are making comments through his word. His word is watering us. Okay? We're not to worship men. I don't worship men, brothers and sisters in Christ, other than the man Christ Jesus. But I'm talking about these teachers, the ones I believe that are saved. I don't worship them, and you shouldn't worship them either. And they always tell you to turn to this book. Okay? I agree with what a brother in Christ said, if you're listening to somebody and he doesn't tell you to turn in your book, to follow along, you shouldn't listen to him. Okay? Why? Because he's not watering you by the word. Which we're getting to the next verse, Ephesians 5.25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Okay? God didn't leave us hanging. Husbands, you're supposed to do that for your wives, but spiritually, Jesus Christ is our husband, and we're the bride of Christ. He's watering us with his word. He's given us his perfect written word. Are you staying in it day and night? Are you bearing fruit? Okay? Are... All these people that are attacking it are you using a Bible perversion that's not God's Word. You're not being watered by God's Word if you're using a Bible perversion. All these other Bible versions in English are Bible perversions. They go back to the Vatican. They're Catholic Bibles. People don't want to hear that. Well, tough. That's absolute truth. They're Catholic Bibles. People say, what about the New King James? Uh, it blends King James Version with, like, the NIV. It takes the Texas Receptus... And I've done it, uh, videos on it, but King James Video Ministries have done a lot of hardcore videos. I love watching them every once in a while about the Bible version issue. You have the Texas Receptus, which is what the King James Bible is based off of, and you have the Nestle's Elan, which is all the other versions. The New King James takes the Texas Receptus, which is what the King James Bible is, and Nestle's Elan, and it blends it. It's trying to get you away from God's Word. It's still a very wicked book. It's very uh, satanic. You don't want a new King James. Stick with the old. Stick with the King James Bible. Okay. So, what's with the water there? This is what waters us. This is how we grow. Our walk with the Lord grows. This is how you grow as a Christian. It'll tell you. And let's get to the next verse. Psalms, uh, Psalms 1, verse 3. Okay. 
Verse 3 here. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and bringeth forth his fruit in his season. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's where I got the title for this study. His leaves will not wither. And we'll get to the asking you, is, are your leaves withering? Okay. But bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Matthew 3, 8. Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. The changed life. Um, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Okay. John 17, 7. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. We talked about that verse. Psalms, 11, or Psalms 119, 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay. When it says bringing forth his fruit in his season, God's going to clean up your life through his word. Okay. Remember, there's two types of fruit. Got to get this out there. You have good fruit and evil fruit. We talked about this in Matthew 17, 15, 20. Uh, evil tree cannot bear good fruit. And a good tree cannot bear evil fruit. Okay. But I wanted to ask you, did you know that evil fruit can look like good fruit? I have some um, berries around here that they actually look like, you know, they have the shape and texture of a blackberry, and they're red, and we have salmon berries that are red, and we've got salmon berries that are kind of like a golden color, you know, uh, kind of yellowish, orange, kind of goldish. And those are edible, the salmon berries, the blackberries are edible, but these berries, they're not raspberries, they're just, you don't eat them, they're poisonous. They look good. But there's a little, you can see there's a difference. Once you look closely, there's a difference in the fruit. But from a distance, it looks like it's a good fruit. And you walk up and realize, oh, it's that one fruit. It's bad. You don't need it. Okay, evil fruit, from a distance, can look like good fruit. That's why the Bible says that we're supposed to, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. He the spirit judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. We use this book to judge that fruit. You get a closer look, this is your magnifying glass, you get a closer look and you see that fruit is evil. Okay? Don't be deceived by putting this book down. Because then you don't have your magnifying glass to see the evil fruit and you can be deceived. Okay? What happens when you eat... Uh... Oh, what happens when you eat the evil fruit? These people who eat evil fruit, what's the evidence of it? Uh, when you eat something that's um, po it's poison. All these fruit that you're not allowed to eat, it's poison. What's the fruit of these people that have evil fruit? They're not following the Word of God. Okay? And they try to poison you who do follow the Word of God. Now, did you know that good fruit can go bad? And please hear me out on this. People are like, no, no good fruit's good fruit. It can't go bad. Now, I didn't say evil. I did not say evil. I said go bad. Okay. You know how you can set fruit on the table if you never touch it, eventually it's going to go bad. If you have sin in your life and you put, uh, you have a basket of apples and you put one rotten apple in there, guess what happens? It starts causing the other apples to go rotten faster. But the best way to talk about this is um, Peter Ruckman did a good study, did a really good study, Seven Things a Christian Can Lose. I like that study. I wish he had done more scripture. Because uh, there's a lot more scripture if you do the study on your own that you can go along and it's fun. I love the Word. You take joy in the Word, meditating in it. Okay, You love God's Word. But one of the things he mentioned in there that you can lose is your testimony. What happens when you're preaching the Gospel to somebody that... Or better yet, I'm trying to do it in the right way. You lose your testimony with somebody when you try to preach the gospel to them and you turn out to, and you do something that's a hypocrisy, being a hypocrite. Well, I'm in ministry full time, but I'm playing video games. Wicked, wicked video games. And I'm telling people that you're to abstain from all appearance of evil. You're planting fruit. You're trying to encourage the brethren. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. You know, you need to give sin, get rid of sin in your life. And then you find out that person is playing video games and they justify them. What's ha what happened? They lost their testimony. 
oh, I'm a Christian, and I'm a King James Bible believer, and then they catch you in the bars. That same person catches you in the bars. You can lose your testimony. That fruit that you, you grew, you got fruit because you're preaching God's Word, and you're showing love for the lost world, or you're preaching to brothers and sisters in Christ, and next thing you know, they see hypocrisy in your life, and what happens? You lost that testimony. Not your salvation. To the lost world, you lose your testimony. There's many testimonies. Part of this ministry was prayer and testimony. People getting testimonies of God healing them, um, God changing their life, God doing saving them in their life. Today in town, I almost got hit twice. <laughs> I don't like driving anymore. I went nine years without driving because of a seizure disorder, and I almost got hit twice. <laughs> it's like every time I looked up, Trying to keep my eyes on the road, but I'm like, oh Lord, thank you, thank you for saving me. That was so close. One guy started changing lanes instantly without the blinker, and I was pulling out to the nearest lane. He was in the far lane, and I go to pull her out, and I'm going slow. I just, I don't go fast, praise the Lord. I go the speed limit. Everybody here speeds. It's just, you gotta go as fast as you can, I guess. And I'm pulling out, and that guy just shoots into my lane, and it's like really close. I'm like, thank you, Lord. And there was another incident, too, where I'm, someone almost hit me. So, uh, there's great testimonies you can have, but you can lose your testimony. That fruit can go bad. Right. Um, now we're going to talk about trimming the tree. Okay. God, in your life, when you truly get saved and born again, your life is still a wreck. You have a tree... That when you get saved, you have a zeal for the Lord, you're going to start reading His Word, you're going to start praying, and you're going to start studying the Word. Okay? Those are very important. Read the Word, study the Word, pray to God that He opens the Word to you, and you start praying and talking with the Lord about your life. You start getting some fruit. But your tree has a lot of bad fruit on it. Rotten fruit. Limbs that don't even grow fruit. Let's put it that way. You have limbs that won't grow fruit. Because they're limbs, that's stuff that's left over from your lost life. What does God do? He cuts away the tree. There's certain ways you trim fruit trees so they'll grow more, they'll, they'll regrow more bountiful, and they start growing even more fruit. I forgot what it's called. But um, that's what God does in your life. When you first get saved, your life is going to be a mess in the sense that you have so much wickedness in your life. God's going to start opening your eyes and saying, okay, that's got to go. Now we're going to replace it with this. Rotten fruit out, limbs that aren't uh, producing fruit, gone. Here's a limb that will produce fruit. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Don't do that, do this. Get rid of that, get this in your life. Replace bad addictions with good addictions. Make sure you're reading your Bible. Make sure you're staying in prayer. Okay? Make sure you're staying away from the three people we listed here, the ungodly, uh, the sinner and the scornful. Okay? Don't let them mess you up so your tree stops bearing fruit. Now the leaves, okay, we're going to get into that part. Are your leaves withering? The sign that a, a dead leaf, when a leaf starts, because I've got some plants around here that I, a lot of them are still alive, some of them look like they're about to die, but the Lord blesses, with, blesses me and I, I can Get them back to health, pull out all the bad leaves. But leaves that don't get sun, that don't get water, the leaf starts to go bad. And what happens? The dead leaf takes up much of the energy of the plant. That's why people, I've been taught that you snip it. You take the dead leaf off, so then the good leaves can grow stronger and the plant can start using energy to grow more leaves that are healthy. Okay. So when your leaves start to wither, what's happening? You're not getting water. You're not getting sun. Light. Okay? His word. You, um, let's see. Has to be snippy top. I just didn't, okay, yeah. I just want to make sure I didn't want to jump ahead. Two main reasons that your leaves will start withering and you're not producing much fruit. Two main reasons. We read it, both of them. One is the people you fellowship with. The world will mess you up if you start falling back into the world. Resurrecting the old man. Start fellowshipping with lost people. False converts. Start following false ministries. 
that's going to cause your leaves to wither. Okay? The second thing that will cause your leaves to wither is as we've read here, if you put the Word of God down, if you don't meditate in the Word night and day, this is your water, this is your light, the sun. I'm doing it for analogy for plants. They need sun, they need light, they need good soil, foundation. You put this book down, your leaves are going to start to wither. Some of your fruit could go bad, and your tree stops producing fruit. I've been there. I've fallen back into sin. I've put this book down. I've gone days in, without reading it and just indulging and playing little games when I first got saved and big games when I first got saved. I quit them, fall back into them, quit them, fall back to them. I realized that when, after I got saved, when I first got saved, I played them and didn't have a problem with them because like it says there, Fruit in his season. When I first started uh, got saved, I was still playing video games, watching movies and TV shows. God started cleaning me up. I started getting rid of movies. I think I told this in my testimony, okay? I watched those movies so many times, I didn't have to say, okay, let's watch this movie to see if it's bad. I could go through my head, okay, this has a lot of cussing. This has fornication in it. This has nudity in it. This has this, this has that. I could start chucking them. And then as it got down to where there was le very little left, then I started watching them. But fruit in this season. But my point is, is I started reading the Word of God. It started taking up more of my time. I went from being eight hours of playing video games and watching movies to spending three, two to three to four hours watching nonstop studies throughout the day and reading God's Word in the morning and at night. And it kind of started taking up more of my time. Then God got that out of my life. Now that God showed me the truth and got video games, movies, and TV shows out of my life, anytime they come back into my life, this seems to go like this. Okay? Why is your leaves uh, withering? Because of the people you're fellowshipping with, lost world, the ungodly, false teachers, false converts, the sinners, the lost world, you're trying to fellowship with them, and the scornful. People who hate Jesus Christ and His Word. Okay. They're still lost. I get it backwards. Wolves in sheep's clothing, false teachers, was the first one ungodly. And all lost people are ungodly, but that was the point for this study. Uh, the way of the sinner is the lost um, professing Christians, false converts. They're lost. They're all ungodly. They're all sinners. And they're all scornfuls in the long run. And then scornful is people like atheists who just reject Jesus Christ outright. Don't fellowship with them. Okay. The life of sanctification. Right? This is how you bear fruit. This will tell you how to live your life, the stands you're supposed to take. Okay. So, Psalms 1, verse 4. You're getting on Psalm 1, verse 4. Okay. The ungodly are not so. We just read there that people who are saved shall be like a tree planted by the river of waters and bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaves are also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now as a Christian, your leaves can wither. They won't die. But um, the ungodly, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. If you ever seen something chaffed, is something that uh, the grass around here, when uh, spring starts, the grass is green, it looks lively, but come to the end of summer, everything looks dead. It starts crumbling and the wind just blows it away. 2 Thessalonians 2, chapter 2, verse 12. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay? We always say... Uh, brothers in Christ in ministry will say that the number one reason why people go to hell is because of self-righteousness. But what leads to self-righteousness? Right? Worldly sorrow. They want their sin. They love their sin. They like their flesh being in charge. Okay? Believe not the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. Sin. Ephesians, and that's uh, the chaff there. The ungodly. That's why they're ungodly. They don't want a final authority. They don't want someone telling them what to do. An almighty, righteous God telling them what to do. Uh, they don't fear God. Ephesians 4.14 Here's something else. 
that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness. Remember what I said about the magnifying glass? To see the evil fruit, you need this. You close this, you have no magnifying glass to see the evil fruit, and it looks good to you. It looks good. It sounds good. The sermon sounded good. The guy did all the talking and barely paraphrased verses and used very few verses and did a lot of talking about the world and joking around and saying a lot of jokes and everything, playing to the crowd. It sounded good. But without the magnifying glass, the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. We're no more children. At one point, you go from being a babe in Christ to being a mature Christian. There's no such thing as a babe in Christ your whole walk with the Lord, your whole life as a Christian. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Notice it says may grow up. And what we're talking about the tree. Grow up. Branch out. Have more fruit. More life. More abundant. Now, that talks about the ungodly. So verse 5, Psalms 1, verse 5. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Right? Once again, there's separation. We are not to conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. If I can, keep, if I can say it without running out of breath. There's supposed to be a distinction between someone who's saved and lost. There's supposed to be separation. Love not the world. Maybe the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Okay? We're not to be a friend of the world, the ways of the world. Right? Now, right there when it says, for the, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. People say, judgment? What is it talking about? Let's look at the two places that people are being judged. What's the judgment talking about here? Where are the saved sinners going to be judged? 2 Corinthians 5.10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. The judgment there, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous, we're going to be in heaven. The judgment seat of Christ is going to be in heaven. That's where the saved are going to be. Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women who got saved by the true gospel. Okay. And that's why fruit is so much important. Notice what it says there, whether it be good or bad. We're going to have to answer for everything we've done in our life as a Christian. Before we got saved, that's been wiped clean. The punishment of our sins for sinning has been washed away. Our sins have been washed away. But you're still going to have to answer for your life as a Christian. Good works versus bad works. Okay. Now it says there, uh, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Where shall the ungodly appear? Revelations 20.11 And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on him, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Remember what I said about the law of sin and death? You're judged according to the law, and according to the law you have to be perfect, or you're going to go to hell. That's the punishment. For one sin, you go to hell. You're worthy of hell. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. The great white throne where they're going to be judged by Jesus Christ. Saved, judgment seat of Christ. Lost, the great white throne. That's what it's talking about here when it says before the judgment. Um, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. It's not saying they get off scot-free. It's saying they're not going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. 
and they're not going to be able to stand either. They're going to be kneeling. We're all going to kneel, but I'm saying the people who rejected Jesus Christ are going to be falling on their knees and confessing uh, Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay. So, that's it for this. So, are your leaves withering? Are you bearing any fruit? Something to think about. Stay in this word night and day. Okay? Stay in your Bible every morning, every night. Study it so you can't be deceived. This is your magnifying glass to look at that bad fruit to see if it's bad or good fruit. Okay? Stand, stand, stand. Don't faint. Don't falter. Stay in this book, brothers and sisters in Christ. Continue getting that good fruit. Okay? Let God continue to sanctify your life and clean up your life. Okay? Are your leaves withering? Are you barely... Uh, are your leaves withering? Or are they flourishing? Are you bearing very little fruit? Or are you bearing lots of fruit? Are you one of those 30-fold? Or are you one of those 60-fold, 100-fold? People that just love the Lord and they want to bear as much fruit as possible before we get caught up. Okay. Some things to think about. Thank you for watching.